guess we need to brush that. Why? Do I need to like brush it out like this? What am I doing? Ah, is it so white? Why is it so white? Hey guys, what's up? I hope you are having a fantastic day. Today, we are testing out a whole bunch of very like viral makeup primarily products. Like most of this stuff is makeup, but there are a couple of things that I also wanted to test that I've been seeing kind of around that seem really good that um, I'm excited about. If this isn't your first Thursday here, you know the drill by now, but if you're new here, welcome. We do full day wear tests on products and see what's worth the hype and what isn't. And we zoom in close, none of this filter nonsense. I'm gonna show you every pore on my skin because I expect if I'm gonna be spending money on products, they better work. Or at least I should know who it should work for, if that makes sense. So make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. New videos here every Thursday and let's dive into some makeup. And now that we're zoomed in, I think I'm gonna start with the brows. And this is a brand that I've actually never tried before. They were from Sephora, that's where I bought them. This is, I think, Ref, Refi, Refi, Refi. This is their brow sculpt and this is supposed to be like a lamination kind of product. And you guys know how I feel about lamination products. For my brows, I want them, I want them all. And I have like thick, unruly brow hairs that like don't want to do anything that I tell them. There are very few products that like actually work for me. And it's like a wax gel hybrid that's supposed to keep your brows like locked in place. So it has the gel product in here and then you like pull on the lid and it has this like comb and brush kind of system, which I thought looked really cool because again, my brow hairs are thick. And so I find that most spoolies are just too weak <laughs> to try and get them to brush in place. So I saw this and I was like, ooh, they seem to know what they're talking about. This feels stiff, this should work for me. So I'm gonna start by brushing the product into my brows. Whoop, yike. Ah, uh, I guess we need to brush that. Why? Do I need to like brush it out like this? What am I doing? Ah, is it so white? Why is it so white? Do I have to put it in and then use the thing? What's ha what is happening to my brows? What is this comb thing? Why isn't that working? Oh, there we go, I think. I'm just gonna sit here silently and try to figure out this product apparently. Why is it so white? I don't, why, I don't understand. I guess I need a lot more product than I thought because it was like, use a small amount, but like usually when they do that, they don't mean for my brows. <laughs> okay, I know they look a little crazy right now. Just bear with me. I know that there, <laughs> there are some of you that are not fans of the up kind of like floofy brow uh, situation and that's okay to each their own. I happen to like it. Let's see happens if I try and go like this to them. They don't feel laminated is the thing that I'm struggling with. Like I feel like I need more product in and I, I feel like I'm gonna regret <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna regret this. I feel like we're done here. This is the look. Right here, right like like look at look at this. Yes. All of the see this is why I do my brows first because brands create products that make my brows go white. Why do I fall for this every time? Like the girl in the video on the Sephora website, she was just like, look at my brows. They're so beautiful now. And I'm like, yeah, they are. Why aren't mine? <laughs> okay, I feel like I finally did the uh, proper amount that it required. Cause now, now my brows are cemented. I just wasn't using enough. Okay, you can see they look a little crazy versus the other ones. Bear with me because I, thi I think this might work. I'm gonna put a little pencil in them and then like kind of get the shape going, but like I feel like this can be good. It just looks insane right now. Like look at the difference between my brows. <laughs> this is definitely like a, like a trust the process brow, you know? So we'll get that done to something like this. And I have to say there is a big learning curve to this product. First of all, it comes out completely white, which I was not expecting. And it also tends to clump. Now it is fairly malleable. Like you can kind of work through with the brush. The comb is a weird shape. I don't like that it's curved. It should be like straight across more. So I'm kind of on the fence about it because I like the lamination look and like this brow looks good, but this one took a lot of work. So I'm, I, I have to figure figure it out still. But now let's go on to foundation. And I found two different foundations that were super, super popular that I wanted to try. And so I asked you guys on Instagram, which one I should try. So I'm gonna go get my phone, see what you picked. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's neck and neck, 50-50. Okay, well then I guess we better try 
both then. <laughs> I'll split my face in half. So the two foundations I guess we're trying today. One is It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Foundation Plus Skin Care. Again, this isn't new to my knowledge, but it has been kind of popping up again. And then the other one is the Beauty Blender Bounce Skin Tint. This is the Always Radiant Skin Tint. Um, I've never tried this one before and uh, I don't believe I've tried this one, but I think they're similar enough that it would kind of actually be worthwhile trying them both side by side because I think they're both supposed to be medium coverage, that radiant dewy kind of your skin but better look. Um, so hopefully I got good matches <laughs> that I can wear both of them. I'm gonna start by priming the skin. This is a primer. I was just gonna tell you what it was, but I think it's next week's video <laughs> that I actually like tested it for. I've been trying to film as much as I can in advance and I'm going to take the last, never done this before, the last two weeks of December off from videos. Very proud of myself trying to like self care, take some time, you know? But I filmed next week's video before this one because I didn't get the products in time. Spoiler alert though, it's real nice. So make sure you watch that one because it's really good. Okay, so we'll do It Cosmetics on this side, Bounce Skin Tint on this side, and then we will see which one we like more. Will we like one more? I don't know. The consistency is very watery. You can see that. The shade also looks a little bit dark. This is, what shade is this? This is medium neutral. Might be too dark. And the whole thing with this particular foundation is that it's, again, it has skincare in it. And I've tried the other it cosmetics foundations before and they are absolutely gorgeous. If you have not tried their CC cream, it's stellar. You definitely need it in your life. Trying to like work around my brows so I don't have to redo them. A little bit on the eyelids, cause why not? Okay, so that is one side. It looks beautiful. Yeah, that's like beautiful, super radiant. Definitely has some coverage to it. It doesn't feel heavy though. Oh, that is nice. I can still see my skin through it. It's not emphasizing pores or anything like that. Like that's that's really pretty. Now I'm a little nervous because it's feeling like it's it's oxidizing. That's the one thing about it's, it cosmetics is that it does seem to oxidize on my skin and get a little darker. So I'm getting a little nervous about that. Hopefully it's just in my head. I think I got medium neutral because it was among the most neutral options. I find sometimes even with fair options. The neutral isn't there. It's just really pink or really yellow. So let's try this one. And Beauty Blender states for this particular product that it's an actual skin tint that is going to stay put because that's always been my issue actually with skin tints is that they don't. They completely wear off of your skin within maybe four hours. And I hate that. So it'd be great if it didn't do that. And I'm using the other side of the sponge, by the way. Ooh, also got that nice medium coverage, radiant kind of a finish. Oh, that's also really pretty. The shades are mildly different. We'll try and like blend it out to make everything look a little bit more seamless. But do you have a preference? Like just as it is, not set or anything. Which side do you think is gonna be better? Let me know in the comments. Honestly, I think I like both, but as of right now, I think I like the It Cosmetics side better. And the reason is, is that it makes my skin look smooth, whereas this side with the um, Beauty Blender side, it doesn't. Like my skin looks a little bit more textured there versus this side, it's like, you know, but I think longevity is gonna be huge for this. Like if this isn't gonna last on my skin all day, I don't want it. It's just not worth it to me. I'm gonna do concealer and powder and all that stuff. And while we do that, let's talk about a perfume because I seem to be including perfumes in almost all my videos right now. I'm obsessed, but I think it's okay that I'm obsessed. I don't think it's an obsession that hurts anybody or whatever that <laughs> TikTok is. And that perfume is Ariana Grande's perfume, the cloud one. I was seeing it here and there over the last little while, like people talking about it in their favorites and it showing up in videos, things like that. And now it's sort of like snowballed in a lot of these like perfume videos that I'm seeing on TikTok and on Instagram. Like a lot of people are mentioning this one as one of their favorites. And I was like, well, I'm already this far deep into the whole perfume game. Might as well add this one to my collection. I also need to look up what the notes are for this. It is super highly rated, whoa. Okay, so this is how they describe it. So it has like under notes of vanilla, a little praline, coconut with top notes of pear, lavender, orange, which is really interesting. I don't, I don't even know how that would smell. Like I'm excited, but I, I can't imagine it. <laughs> Here it is, adorable, floating on a cloud course, but you can take it out as well and just have it like this. Okay. Can't smell anything. I'm gonna spray it in the box first. 
Ooh. Oh, that's really nice. So it's like a, it's like a, hold on, I need to put it on. Okay, so I get the creamy, that sort of whipped coconut, like a hint of vanilla kind of an, like warmth to it. And then on top it smells mildly sweet, but not overly sweet. Like it's not like a sugar cookie kind of a scent. It doesn't smell super orange. It doesn't smell super vanilla. I don't smell pear at all or lavender. It just melds into this really intoxicating scent. But the best I can describe it is sort of like a mildly sweet, creamy, warm, but fresh scent. It's it's really pretty. Oh, I like that a lot. Oh boy. I can see why everyone's obsessed with it because spray it all over. I'm gonna let that like melt a little bit and then we'll see what Chris thinks of it. But let me just like powder and stuff, hang on. Okay, I just started putting on bronzer and then I realized I have a blush we need to test. It's by Charlotte Tilbury. I think this one is new. This is their high blush in pinkasm. It is their light beauty wand. Get a swatch. Ooh, pretty pink, very shiny. Let's put some on. I don't know, is that, is that too much? Is there such a thing as too much blush? I think not. Now I'm just going to blend it in. And they are known for these wands, like the bronzer one, the sculpting one is really popular. I have the highlighter and I love it. I haven't tried the blush though. And I think this is a new shade, but again, I could be wrong. I know that they do have blush. What do we think? I feel like that blended out a lot. Like I need more blush. I think I put the blush up too high on this side. Looks a lot better on the other side. Whoops. That's okay. That's what <laughs> foundation and concealer are for. Okay. I think, I think we fixed it. Okay. So that is one coat of the blush. Feel like I want some more, more on this side. Maybe I'll tap it instead of with a brush, I'll tap it in with my fingertips. See if that gives like a different effect, you know? Yeah, you see that? Like I it just, it looks stronger, I guess, in terms of shade. I would use my fingertips for this. Maybe a little bit on the nose. I think I like it. Like it's very like, it's super glossy and glowy if that's your thing, which for me it is. It wasn't already very obvious, but I like the shade. I like the finish. I like it. Okay, now I'm gonna put on a little eye makeup because I don't have anything new. Okay. A little bit on there. I still need to recurl my eyelashes, but we can do that later. Now you can see my skin is dewy and is bordering a little bit on oily looking. And so we're gonna try this oil control on the go volcanic roller thing from Revlon. This is an oil absorbing roller that you basically, you roll it all over your face and you can reuse it. So you have to like take it out and wash it. It's like, it's like a stone thing. And it's supposed to absorb any of the oil that's sitting on your face. You can put it on like over top of makeup and it's supposed to like clear any of that oil. So this right here is what it looks like. It has a little roller ball here and you're supposed to glide this on your face. It's supposed to be super easy to wash, which we will also test. And um, you just go over any areas that seem to look a little oily. So let's try it on one side. Oh my gosh. Stop, no way. Do you? Like look how non-oily this side is now. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited, wow. Like obviously I'm not going over the like entire area, but like I was trying to go over some and just to see what would happen. I'm impressed. Like to me, it's definitely muted a lot of that shininess that was right there. That's crazy, that's so cool. It doesn't seem to be like, I mean, there's a little bit of makeup on it, but it doesn't seem to be like peeling it off my skin, if that makes sense. Super easy to use. Wow, 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 wow. I think that's so cool. Like it, it did work and it did remove a lot of the like shininess I was getting down the center of my face. That's awesome, I really like it. But now of course we're gonna add some shine back to my skin in the form of highlight and like a glossy lid. And I'm gonna be using the Fenty, this is the Diamond Bomb Triple Drip. And this is supposed to be like a diamond veil palette basically. And so it has three different shades right here and you can use them on the eyes, you can use them on the skin and it's gonna give like a glossy look to the skin. And apparently I was reading some of the comments on it and a lot of people were saying that it's not like the original Diamond Veil, which is very, very sparkly. It's very glittery. Um, this is supposed to be more like a wet look and a lot of people have been using it as an eye gloss. So I thought that would be really fun. And they are so buttery. 
oh my gosh, look at that. It like honestly does look wet. That's so cool. So I'm kind of swatching them out of order, but that's okay. I went straight for the middle one. So those are the three shades right there. Not a huge difference between these two. And obviously the one in the middle is very pink, but I'm kind of excited. Yeah, I would say like this one for whatever reason, I'm like swatching it and it's not really showing up as like super glow. Oh, there we go. Okay, I had to like press into it a little bit more. Then it has more of like a an espresso kind of a wet look, which is really pretty. Um, but I think I'm gonna go for my original one. And I'm going to press that onto my lids. Cause I like the concept of like a wet eyelid look, but those are really hard to pull off with like an actual like liquid, you know? Oh, got mascara on my lip, of course, naturally. What do you guys think? Does it look glossy? <laughs> Let's try it on the skin in the form of like a highlight. So maybe I'll go for more of that pinky one. Maybe I'll mix it with the other one too. Yeah, that's very, look, look how glossy that is. These shades might be a hair dark for me. I'm just covering myself in this stuff. What do you guys think? I think I like it, but I don't think this is like an everyday product for me. I think it's like, it's very blinding. Like I think it's almost too much in the center of my skin. I might like powder that a little. I think I flew a little too close to the sun on that one. Yeah, that's better. Now let's go on to the lips. So the one product I really want to test out is the Glimmer Glow by Essence. I don't know if you've seen, but like the sparkly lip is like really trending right now. A lot of people are loving it in that sort of like effortless, not like super glittery, but in that look at it in like with like a flash on. And so a lot of people have been going after this. I don't know if you saw my last video, but I attempted with the Tom Ford one, which foiled me. And so this is a very cheap alternative that people have been going towards because the Tom Ford one, which sort of started it all with the frost balm, is sold out like literally everywhere it seems like. So uh, this is supposed to be, I don't know if it's a direct dupe, but people have been really enjoying it. It is very glittery. It's very holographic glittery. Can you see all of that hollow in there? I feel like Christine would be very proud. And so I'm gonna use that as sort of like a topper. And I thought that we would use one of the super nude lipsticks from Charlotte Tilbury on underneath. Cause I've been meaning to try these and I just haven't yet. So I have here, this is Runway Royalty and this is their matte one. This is Cover Star. So two different Charlotte Tilbury ones, but Charlotte Tilbury is just like all over the internet right now. So I want to know what the hype is all about. So that's Runway Royalty and that is Cover Star. I personally like Cover Star a lot more. Um, this is a little too like pink for me. I don't know, but this feels also a little light. So let's see. This lipstick gives me like that. Remember when people wore foundation as lipstick? <laughs> that's the vibe it gives me. Let's try putting this one on top pink it up a little. Yeah, I think that's better. I feel like I'm always cocktailing lipsticks. Yeah, that's so much better. Okay, now the glimmer. So this is what it looks like before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now let's put on some glitter. I don't see anything. I'm like trying to layer a whole bunch on. Do you see any sort of a difference? I don't see anything. Let me just like swatch it next to these shades without anything just see what it looks like. Oh, this is not at all like the sparkly <laughs> lip glosses that I've seen. This is straight up lip balm with flaky hollow in it. I mean, if that's your look, it's right here. I don't think that's my look though. And now, I mean, since I'm here, there is another glitter lip that I've been meaning to try and it's this one by Givenchy and it is like jet black. What is this called? Gloss Interdit Revelateur. I'm butchering that. I mean, this is what it looks like. It's pure black and it has lots of glitter in it, but I think it's supposed to be more of like a berry tint on the lips. So this is like a super nice nude pink kind of a vibe, which I really like. But let's take it off and put the Givenchy, or maybe we'll try, do we put the Givenchy on top? I feel like not. I feel like this is like a standalone. Wah. Oh, did you, do you, why are my lips bright pink? Is this a stain and I didn't know? <laughs> Modern matte. For cover star lipstick nowhere on any of these does it say it's a lip tint so um heads up let's try this out okay like it definitely goes on more black than i was expecting but it seems to be evening out to like a 
berry tone. Definitely more on the cool side though. Now, is she glittery? Doesn't, like it doesn't look glittery, which is nice, but it does look nice and shiny. I don't know, let me know in the comments, which one do you like better? Oh, and I have to get Chris to smell the perfume. Hang on. Christopher, can you smell? I don't know if it smells good. Yeah, I like that. It's good, right? Yeah, that was nice. It like stays on my skin too. Mm -hmm. Smells luxe. I can't figure out what the scent, like. There's vanilla in there. A little bit, yeah. There's something fruity. There is, but I, I couldn't like, yeah. I can tell you what it is. What it's is it? like orange, pear, cream of coconut, vanilla, and something else that I've forgot. Oh, lavender. It smells very luxe though. And yeah, like fresh and mm -hmm. creamy, like I'm excited about it. So now I'm gonna go about my day. I will check in with you guys tonight. We will see how everything is looking on the skin and see if I have any picks, any top picks, because this was like a pretty successful round so far. So fingers crossed this lasts on my skin all day. All right, it's now the end of the day. This is what my makeup is looking like. And I just realized in moving the footage over that I didn't blend any foundation on this eyebrow. Sorry about that. <laughs> so let's talk about the makeup. Specifically looking at the foundations side by side, I have to say that I think, at least in this light, the side, the, what is it, it cosmetic side looks better to me. It still looks more full coverage. It doesn't look as spotted, whereas this side is really shiny. You can see it like breaking up around on my chin. And then the glossy eyelid thing. Why are you focusing on my door? Focus on me. Thank you, camera. And then for the Fenty Gloss Trio. Um, it, again, it's not something that I would use every day because it is, like very over the top. It's really pretty, but I would say for my lids, I was hoping for something that looked a little bit more wet on my eyelids and it looked more sparkly to me. The lips, you can see, this is the Givenchy one. It kind of um, faded down to a line here. Pretty sure that's my fault though, because again, forgot to exfoliate my lips. I feel like I've been saying this a lot in these videos. I think I like the blush. I am impressed that, I mean, like my brow is still like locked in place with this um, brow product. So I mean, I will hand it to them. It did work. However, it said to use a little bit and I definitely need to use a lot. So I guess it kind of depends on your brow hairs and your brows and all of that stuff. Will it be something I continue to use? Probably because it did really lock them down but I also really like the ABH Brow Freeze. So for me, that one's a little bit more forgiving, but I do appreciate that they haven't moved. Okay, and then the Volcanic Roller, I wanted to um, like pop it out and try and wash it and just see what that's like. Um, I purposefully didn't um, continue to rollerball it all day because I wanted to see what the foundation would end up looking like. But now that we're here, we can just do another one, see what happens. And I believe once you do this, it needs to dry overnight, like once you wash it. I gotta say, I'm not a big fan of the um, the sound of it. It's mildly of like chalk on a chalkboard and I cannot stand that. Like, I mean, it does take away the shine. I am going to continue to use it, but let's pop this out and see what it's like to wash it. It says you just need to like twist this. Oh, there we go. Twist it this way to unlock it. There we go. Okay. And then I guess I just sort of pop it out, maybe? Oh, maybe not. This way. Okay, got it. Ta da! Okay, that was pretty easy. Now I just need to let it dry overnight. So, I mean, if you're willing to do the work to clean it, then I think this is absolutely worth it. So, let me know if you tried any of these products or heard or seen them around the internet. Leave me a comment down below. I want to know what you guys think. And as always, the products are linked down below in case you are interested. Check out these videos on the side in case you have missed any. And that is everything. I will see you all in my next video. Mwah.